I recently got this awesome rotating anode x-ray tube from a kind viewer. As you can see from the erosion of the anode and the discoloration of the glass, it has probably seen its best days, but it would certainly still work. Rotating anode tubes have, as the name suggests, an anode that can rotate. The whole thing is basically an induction motor. The shaft can be under vacuum inside the tube without the need for electrical vacuum feed-throughs. The anode is rotated by a stator located around the bottom of the tube. This spreads the heat generation and wear of the anode over a larger area. The problem is that in Germany it is forbidden to put an x-ray tube into operation without the appropriate permits. So until I live in a country that doesn't have a law that forbids you to inadvertently increase your neighbor's cancer risk, I will have to think of something else for this gem. Arresting me for what? I'm not allowed to stand up for myself? And I already have an idea. I'm a big fan of unusual table decorations. My little tow molecular pump has already involuntarily signed an organ donor card. Because when it dies one day, I'm so going to convert the rotor into a moving paperweight. Before I use the tube, it first has to be cleaned. Unfortunately, I only noticed during the cleaning that this is something my viewers will surely find satisfying. So unfortunately, there's not that much to see now. I'm undecided whether to remove this sticker or not. I would be interested in your opinions on this. The tube needs some kind of support to stand upright without the risk of falling over and imploding. For this, I bought this little box on Amazon. First thing is to print out templates and glue them to the box to drill the holes in the right places. You will find out what the extra holes are for later. Since the bamboo wood was a little too light for me, I used a wood stain to darken it. I like this darker color much better. To protect the wood, I applied a coat of Rubio Monocoat. I have very little experience with woodworking and I may have fallen victim to the woodworking channels I subscribe to on YouTube. Rubio Monocoat is relatively expensive, but I was very pleased with the results. After I removed the excess oil, you can see the grain of the wood very nicely. To give the whole thing a little more life, I decided to let the filament glow inside the tube. As you can see, it has two filaments which share a common ground. Depending on which of the three wires at the top of the tube I connect to my power supply, either the larger or the smaller filament will light up. When the X-ray tube is used, the electrons are released at these filaments, which then fly towards the anode and produce X-rays. I chose the larger filament because it produces a slightly warmer light when I run it at 5 volts. But don't worry, the tube will not produce X-rays when only the filament is lit. For this you would have to apply an acceleration voltage of many thousands of volts between the filament and the anode. To avoid having to attach an unsightly switch to the outside of the housing, I decided to use a touch sensor. So first I put together a test circuit on the breadboard to turn an LED on and off by touching the wire. To switch the 5 volts at about 3 amperes, I used a MOSFET. I actually thought about dimming the tube by using pulse width modulation, however it makes annoying noises at less than 100%. I may try changing the frequency of the PWM signal in the future to bring the noise into the inaudible range. To mount the electronics in the box, I 3D printed this insert, which also has small indentations where I can attach small rubber pads to prevent the box from slipping. The only problem was that the Arduino Nano was too long to fit upright in the box, but I wanted to have access to the USB port, so I did a little convincing with a file. The next step was to solder the electronics. Since I honestly lacked a better idea for mounting the Arduino, good and reliable hot glue will do the trick. As a touch sensor, I used this chrome plated nail, which can be pushed through one of the previously drilled holes. 
Then the sensing cable of the Arduino is soldered to the back of the nail. To power the Arduino and the filament of the tube, I use a 5V 10A power supply that I can connect via a barrel jack. As I said in the beginning, the filament is powered by two cables on the top of the tube. So I have no way to hide the cables and the current cables don't look very nice. That's why I bought this braided copper cable. It will turn something I previously considered a problem into a nice design element. To avoid a short circuit, the part of the cables which is inside the box will be insulated with heat shrink tubing. To connect the tube firmly to the base, I 3D printed this adapter. It can be screwed to the insert of the box to clamp everything together. The last step is to remove the old cables of the tube and solder on the new ones. I would like to use this opportunity to thank my patrons from the bottom of my heart. Without your support it would not be possible for me to work on such projects. And of course a big thank you to the person who gave me this x-ray tube. By the way, I am beginning to suspect that these copper cables are not intended to conduct electricity but are sold as pure decoration. Because besides the copper there is also a plastic thread braided in. That along with my lack of experience is the reason for the unsightly looking solder joints. But the resistance of the cables is low enough and so far I had no problems with them. The result is, in my opinion, a beautiful and unique desk decoration that is definitely a conversation starter. Best of all, the tube is still fully functional, so if you wanted, you could get a high voltage power supply as an upgrade and also enjoy the warming x-rays while sitting at your desk. It definitely deserves a permanent place on my desk and it will make me happy every time I look at it. Thank you a lot for watching.